morning guys, how are you? How are you doing? I had a really, really nice line today. I woke up at like quarter to 11, which is actually quite late for me. That used to be early, but it's late for me now. Um, so far this morning, I'm just making this little thing. We got delivered two bedside tables. So I'm just gonna make them now whilst Zoe is out. Zoe's dad just came down actually. Just drove down to come and see us for a couple of days. I don't know how long he's staying, but it's nice seeing Zoe's dad and They've just gone out to go grab some lunch from Bagel Man for us. This morning, I made a little coffee from my coffee machine, which was delicious. Also, I did this this morning. I, I think it's good. This is another life hack, Alfie Day's life hack. As you can see, we don't have any milk. So instead of milk, I just put this in, which is like whipped cream. I thought that's basically the same thing, isn't it? It's just like whipped milk, kind of. I don't know. That's what I think it is. Um, I'm being super manly and productive. I've made one, nearly. And then I've got one more to make. And then, in an hour, I'm going to get all of this cut. All of this mop on my head I'm getting trimmed. So, that will be fun and exciting and I can't wait. Also, I know you guys are commenting that way. Let me walk over here because I've got music playing really loud in there. I know you guys are commenting saying that for my... Ugh. I've got hair in my mouth. That's why I need my hair cut. I know you guys are commenting saying that... Um, I need to shave my beard for November because it's all about the moustache. If you didn't know, I'm doing November, which is to raise money for men's health, which is basically like testicular cancer, prostate cancer, mental illness, and things like that. So if you do want to donate to my page, there'll be a link down below. I want to see how much awareness and money we can raise to help out an amazing cause. And for that, I'm growing a moustache for the whole of November. That's why it's called Movember. Moustache November. Um, yeah, so I'm going this moustache, but basically, my moustache is pretty pathetic. So what I plan to do is grow like a full beard, like keep everything, and I think it's now been like 10 days or 11 days that I've been growing this. And then, when it hits like 14 or 15 days, I'm gonna shave all of this off, because it's all about just the moustache. So I'm gonna shave all of this off once this bit gets a little bit thicker, um, and then I'm gonna be left for the last like two weeks of the month with just a moustache which I'm so nervous about. I'm gonna look so ridiculous in all my videos, but it's for a good cause, you know? And so far we're doing really well. We've raised a crazy amount of money, so keep it up, guys. If we raise, like, 10,000 pounds or something, like, I'll do some, like, little things for milestones. If I raise, so far we've raised, like, 3,800 pounds, I think. If we get it to 5,000 pounds, I don't know what I'll do. Comment down below what you want me to do if we hit 5,000 pounds. If we hit 10,000 pounds, then something else. That's your two targets, £5,000 and £10,000. I think we can do it. There is like, just say if this video gets 400,000 views, which some of my videos I get in my daily vlogs, if one, if all of you donated literally like one pound each, that, oh my gosh, that would be so much money. Um, but yeah, it's super, super easy to donate on the website. You can donate one pound, ten pounds. Someone the other day donated like 150 something pounds, which is crazy. Like absolutely insane. So. Donate as little or as much, like whatever you want, whatever you can afford, it would mean so much. Like next time you want that chocolate bar or you want to buy a sandwich, think actually, you know, I'm going to wait until I get home to eat that sandwich and I'll make it. Or I don't really need a chocolate bar, that packet of crisps, I'm going to donate to help a really good cause. Right, my arm is aching so much from holding this camera up. Plus, I need to make these bedside tables. I promise Zoe I'll try and make them before she gets back. So, all right, I'm going to carry on with these. I'm so good at being manly. Look, both of them done. They've even got little bits where you put stuff in. Little bedside tables, a little second little drawer up there. And these little bits is actually really, really cool. Like, so if you go on the back, so basically you put whatever wires you want coming out of here, and then it goes through here, all the way down, but like tucked away. And then these bits go over there. I'm probably boring you, but basically, if you have like a light or something or an iPhone charger on your bedside table, it hides all the wiring down the crack and then you fill it. It's so cool. I think that's really, really good. That's just something that pleases me. Otherwise, you end up like this and you just get a million trillion wires, which is annoying. Finished up my new video. All good. It's uploading now whilst I am off to get my hair cut. Gonna get this trimmed. Look how long it is. <laughs> and my hair is all short. It's all been trimmed. It's basically like more or less the same length, but a little bit off the sides and the back. And just a little bit thinner because my black patch goes crazy thick. It's like a different texture to the rest of my hair. And it goes really, really curly. Um, but 
<sighs> stupidly didn't bring a jumper with me to town or hoodie. So it's freezing cold and it's raining. Oh, actually, I want to quickly go back up to here and get a tea. Just remembered a tea shop up here. Very British of me, very, very English. Um, there's a tea company shop up here, which me and Zoe love so much. Uh, so I want to quickly grab a tea. And then I'm going to go pick up a PS4 controller. And then I'm going to head back home. Look how cute these little cups are, guys. I quite like this one. And then I'm thinking that one there for Zoe. What do you think? I think they're really cute. And then when we're at home and we're making tea or hot chocolate or coffee or whatever, we can put it in there. And they're eco-friendly as well. I think they're made out of like bamboo fibre. Smelling all the different green teas. Yeah, that one smells good. Oh, it's got peach in it, that's what it is. Yeah, it's like fruity, that one. We got essential green tea, which isn't quite as intense as normal green tea, so that's what cherry. These are the three that I'm going for. So all the Christmassy stuff's out there, guys. Look at all these little stalls here in Church Square. I also did a bit of shopping, kind of couldn't help it. But um, I really, really want a German Bratwurst sausage, so that's what I'm going to get. Back at home now, don't remember the last time I vlogged. Um, my hair's probably an absolute mess because I've just been messing it about today. No! Oh my god, I didn't even mean to talk about my hair. I said it! Did you talk about your hair more than I talk about my hair? It is currently 8 o'clock, 5 minutes to 8 in the evening. And me and Zoe are reading, we've read one book already. And now we're He's reading a, a lot, second and book. a lot of online reading. Yeah, a lot of online reading. Basically, when we get Nala, we want her to be like very well trained, very well looked after. We want to be like, do everything the best we can possibly do for her. So we're reading up a second book now. Oh, Zoe's, reading it. Oh. Zoe's reading it out loud to me. It's, it's the only way that Alfie gets There is so knowledge. much, like so many amazing tips in this book. Like absolutely amazing yeah, tips. Yeah, I really that, that people are like, yeah, so many people have said to me like, oh yeah, when your dog does this, you need to do this. And, and in, in this, this book, book it's like, like no, no, don't do that. Um, but then I guess there's probably things in here that some people wouldn't do. It's just... Well, that's why we've read a couple of books, to get like an understanding overall from different perspectives. If of any of you think. have pugs, um, let us know any training tips. Yeah, because we want her to... We want her to like... Or it's hard, obviously, when you've got a puppy, to her to know what's right and what's wrong. And we don't want to like tell her off or anything like that. Um, yeah, we've just read that you should not, never be angry. Like if she like pooed inside, you're never ever meant to be like, no, no, like you're just supposed to ignore you just have to ignore it. it and only praise the good rather than tell her off when she's done it wrong. But then that's this lady's. Yeah, but I think that's cool. I think that's really, that's really good. I mean, that's the same reinforcement. As because children. It's pubs, positive reinforcement. Yeah. So you just. You just you only reward positive them. Yeah. behavior rather than negative behavior. But also, I don't want to give her a complex about pooing. Like it said, if you if you're like, oh my goodness, oh no, I can't believe you've done a poo inside. She's like, then she doesn't she doesn't she's like, oh, put no, the I've part pooed. together where it's pooing inside. She just thinks, oh no, I've pooed and I'm getting told off. Yeah, pugs are very very tactile. Like they the, all they, they just like they're literally people. living to please people and to please you. So if you tell them off, they don't know, they don't, they can't put two and two together to understand why they're being told off. They can only understand when they're being praised, what they've done to reward that praise and they want to do it again and again and again. There's, so, a, there's a bit in here that was like, don't roll up a newspaper and, um, and, scold, your and dog. scold your puppy. And I was like, oh my God, who does that? Who the hell hits the dog with a newspaper? And also imagine... If you hit a pug with a newspaper, you'd send it across the room. A newspaper's blooming big compared to a Especially little pug. Especially if it was like the Sunday Times or something. <laughs> and little Nala, who's the tiny. Guardian. The Guardian. The Guardian with Nala. Like, it's thick. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, yeah, we're just going through the training section again. I've read this, like, I've been reading this a lot. Um, this one's really good though. Gleam got this for you, didn't they, for your birthday? Yeah. Um, and your mum's read it? Yeah, my mum's read all of it as well, and she's read some other books and things where... We're just getting all the tips we can, so if you do know any... We're basically sponges for knowledge and have like literally been like pug sponge knowledge for like the last three months. Yeah. So loads of you guys were saying that we should have got a pug from a like RSPCA or like a kennel or like a rescue centre. But there's 
both pros and cons from getting a pug from a, from a breeder and pros and cons from getting a pug from a rescue centre. Often, and I've read a lot, a lot, like we've read into we've getting dogs, like crazy amount of research. And we've spoken to so many people. We've even been to like, there's pug meetups in Brighton where like hundreds of pugs meet up and we've like gone and met the owners of pugs and spoken. We've done so much stuff. But um, one of the like things that people often say about rescue centres and kennels is that only really get a dog from there if you previously had dogs because some of these dogs have gone through really hard times or they're really upset or they've been looked after really badly and they need to be looked after by somebody who's already previously had experience looking after but dogs to treat them really well. On the other side of it, that isn't always the case. Like some of them have... No, 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 no. Obviously yeah, I'm not saying like always really the case. It's really yeah, balanced. like it's crazy balance, but a lot, a lot of people say that you should only get a dog from a rescue centre if you've got previous experience so that you can look after them and they're like you can help what they're going through. Somebody just text me. But also I like suppose, the best possible. But also I suppose as well because we've always had a pug in mind around here anyway because we have looked there are no pugs in any rescue centres and I don't know if that's because I don't know I guess pugs just maybe they're just super popular yeah there's just no pugs in any of the rescue centres yeah but also a lot of people say you shouldn't get from breeders and yeah loads of people like you shouldn't get them from breeders because then you're encouraging like breeding for selling dogs and stuff like that and that it's some so breeders can be really you guys know now there's no way to please the mass of people in this world everybody's also, got an opinion. opinion everybody's got a reason why they're doing it a certain way and we're getting our pug from a breeder Very who's like breeder. a champion breeder came second in crufts last year like absolutely she it like she loves it she's too. also a judge of like professional dog competitions for crufts and stuff you know that she's a oh, judge I didn't know that. yeah and like, so she's like, like to be able to persuade her, like to tell her enough about us that we would like the dog. She's like, I need to visit your house. I need to visit your parents' house. I need, need to know to, what you do yeah, for a living. I need to know when you're going to be home, how often you're going to be going away. Like she needed to know so many details about us for her to be able to give us her puppies also, to think, make sure that we were right. I think for us as well, that was one of the hardest things was getting it from the right person. Because I know there are probably a lot of people out there that breed dogs who probably shouldn't be breeding dogs and they don't do it professionally and they don't do it they're in the right like way. Casey, Casey registered and they're, and they're, registered and and they're like, oh, it's a pug and then it's not, it's actually a pug and half a Jack Russell. Like, and you could go on Gumtree, yeah. like, for well, it's like, you know when everyone's but, buying tea, tea cup pigs, like the tiny miniature, miniature pigs, pigs, and then they're growing into full-size pigs and you're like, well, hold on. Yeah, yeah. And you just got it off um, of a dodgy but, breeder. But we've literally taken so long to find the right person. Like, for us, it was just as important to find the right person as it was to find the right pug. If, if the person wasn't right and we didn't feel like it was the right environment... Like, we went to her home, we met the mother dog, the father dog yeah, of the dogs. And we also we've, found out the health for both of those dogs. Oh, yeah, and they've had, like... I don't even know what she said. They've had, like, lung checkups. They've had this checkup, this checkup. They got their first injections today. Literally, as you're watching this, it was yesterday for you, but today for me... They got oh, their first yeah, injections. Yeah, injections. today at 11 o'clock this morning. Um, and then they're getting their second one soon. Also, I, a lot of people are saying in the comments that pugs have a lot of health risks. And we obviously know, we've literally, we've been thinking of getting a pug for how long? A year? I've been, I've been thinking like more than a year. More than a year. And then the more we've hung around pugs and the more we've met people with pugs, we've just, we've really thought so hard about this, guys and obviously waited until we've moved in with a garden like this has always been the plan and we know there's health risks involved but we've done a lot of research and we're really going to take very good care of the puppy and also i know that sometimes breeders if they don't sell their puppies they end up in in um, kennels. kennels anyway so, so everybody's like go get a dog from a kennel and then so if we and then if people don't, don't and then if people don't get dogs from breeders then they end up in kennels because the breeders can't look after it's them and it's, a, it's, a horrible it's like a massive circle and everybody has a different opinion and i'm super excited because we're getting a pug soon we just I'm wanted to so clear those excited. things up in case you guys didn't think yeah. we'd done it in case you guys are just thinking oh my god they've rushed into getting a pug and they don't even know what they're doing and they're not ready we are ready we've done so much behind the scenes searching for it including my parents like they're even getting one as well and they've done so much so if me and I saw a comment earlier that was like you guys travel so much though what are you going to do when you go away you can't put it in a hotel all the time number one we don't actually travel 
that much at all. Like, if I go to London for a meeting from now, you I can, can just have that meeting in Brighton. Or you can take Nala to London. Yeah, or I can take train. Nala to London with me on the train. Or just have that meeting in Brighton. And we don't actually go away. We probably go away like three Once times a year. A year. Like three times a year. It depends and on the conferences and things like the Yeah, but also we can change them to shorter time periods. And as well, because my parents are getting the brother, whilst we're away, like if we went away for like two or three days, we can give Nala to my parents to look after with her brother. So she's going to have fun. She's going to be looked after. And if my parents go away for a couple of days, we can, we can look her. after. Also, it's your name. I'm pretty sure it's adamant. The name of my parents' dog is going to be Buzz, which is super cute, I think. Oh, we should have called us Jesse. No, that Jesse is cute, though. Um, um, yeah, we've thought about everything. Like, we're just going on and on. This, bit, this segment has been like nearly 10 minutes of the vlog. I Basically, know, it's just clearing to have some people. a clear up round up, everybody's got a different opinion. Don't worry, guys. We've got the best everything it can possibly be for Nala, and she's gonna Plus, be loved. You see me with children and animals. I'm like, <laughs> you meet up with the Sigoni Jollies and you just steal their children <laughs> like, for the whole day. I'm so like <laughs> mothering to everything. Like, there's no way I would ever tailor. And when we have holidays and things, instead of going to places like last year or was it no this year we went to Greece we can just go and rent like a cottage in like the Isle of Wight and take Nala with us and do things like that I'm really excited I'm so excited I just want her here now on the sofa cuddled up with me oh some people might say that's not a good idea so well I want that in the book right here part three training your pug um once your pug finds a comfy spot on your sofa she will think it is the best seat in the house and that will be her spot and her spot is going to be on my chest while i'm watching tv mm -hmm, probably right we've spoken about pugs enough nothing upsets me more than seeing you guys not being okay about something happening and i released yesterday uh the two more book dates for the points blog book tour and it's basically like me doing signings and if you don't know how signings already work, then that is, I think, why a lot of you are getting confused. I'm just reading a comment now saying, Alfie, it's ridiculous that we can't bring the book we already have. Da, 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 da. We aren't made of money, Alfie. All your true fans already have the book. Why are you doing it for the money? I don't think you realise that I am not in control of anything that happens. For me to be able to meet you, the first time we tried to do it, eight and a half thousand of you turned up. And that wasn't safe. There had to be police helicopters like 10 police horse or like it was ridiculous like absolutely insane it wasn't safe and that's not a negative that's just something that nobody ever expected so from now on they have to be ticketed events and the only way that like wh smith or whoever's running it these ones are run by wh smith um can secure that they're going to close the shop for you so that there's nobody else in the shop except from people that watch my videos and are coming to meet me. That they can pay for bodyguards and security and fencing and all of that. Is if I secure a certain number of books that are going to be sold by people to be able to come and meet me. Um, and there's no other way around it. I said to them, end of guys, I am not making anybody pay to meet me. Like they're not paying, they're like, no, 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 they're not paying nothing. They're buying a book which. They then get the chance to meet you, but they have to buy and pre-order the book. And I said, but what if they've already got a book? And they said, well, then that, that's just how it is. And I said, okay, well, I won't do it then. They said, that's fine, then don't do book signings. And I'm like, no, 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 I want to meet people. I want to meet people, but I just don't want them to have to pay for a book. And they said, but they have to because it's a book signing. And I said, but what if they've already got this? They said, they have to buy one. They can get other books signed, but they have to buy one to be able to secure a place for us to be able to pay for the security and pay for the members of staff and close the store. So they're making like no money that day because I've closed the whole store just for you guys. Um, and then I look at my comments and all of them here, like literally all my comments that I'm just scrolling up and up and up and like I've removed some comments and things like that because it's just absolutely insane how crazy you guys are going in my comments. Like the hate that I'm getting for me doing a book signing. Like, oh, it's so difficult because I wanna meet you guys, but I, I don't have the money to just pay for a venue. I can't just like book out a venue that fits 8,000 people. That would literally cost me like 50,000 pounds or something. I don't have that kind of money. Um, so the only way I can do it, I can literally, the only way it works 
If a bookstore closes the shop for the day, hire members of staff, hire security, pay for security, all of that, but you guys have to buy a copy of the book to be able to attend. So you're not paying to meet me, you're literally paying for a copy of the book, and if you've already got one, then I'm really, really sorry. Like, I can't do anything about that. And it just really frustrates me that how much hate I'm getting now, yet all I'm trying to do is meet as many of you as I possibly can, and everybody constantly, all I get messaged all day, every day is, we went to your next book zone, we went to your next book zone, you said you were coming to Manchester, you said you were coming to Liverpool, you said you were coming to Scotland, you're lied, you're not doing a book signing, why are you going to New York and not the UK? And I'm trying my best to come and meet all of you, and I'm coming to the UK now, and then all I get is just hate in my comments for having to purchase another book, and that's not my fault, like, there's literally no way around this, guys. You're not paying to meet me, you're just paying for a copy of the book that I'm then going to sign. Like, I don't know. It just puts me off like, it just makes me not want to do book signings then because of the amount of hate that my vlogs are getting. Like, this vlog has got so many more dislikes than usual. And I'm not moaning, I'm not saying that I don't want, like, I don't know. I really don't know what to say. There's no way to please all of you at once, and it's absolutely insane. The amount of backlash and hate and angry comments and tweets that I'm getting, like, it's disgusting that you're making people, and I'm not making anyone to do anything, guys. I'm literally trying my best to meet as many of you as possible. That's all I'm trying to do. And if I don't do it, and I say, okay, scrap all the book signings then, because people can't afford to buy another book, which is fine, then I'm going to get a disgusting hate for, like, you didn't even bother coming to this place to do a book signing you said you were going to. Like, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. Because I can't do anything to please everybody. I don't know. All my comments are just negative hate comments that you have to purchase a book to be able to come to the book signing. But that's what a book signing is. If you went to Ed Sheeran's book signing recently, you had to purchase a book. If you go to Rhea Ferdinand's, if you go to One Direction's book signings, you have to buy a copy of their book when you get there. That's just how it is, and I don't, I don't know what else to say. Like, it's really, really bothered me that I've upset so many of you, because I'm, obviously I don't mean to. The whole point of me doing a book signing is that I get to meet you guys, and that's such a fun, positive thing to do. But... I don't know. I think you guys assume that I have a lot more control than what I do. People are like, Alfie, why don't you just actually put your foot down and tell them not, that not to make us purchase a book? I've tried. And if you don't purchase a book, then they can't afford to pay for security. They can't afford to close the shop for the day. So, it's either you guys have to purchase a book to be able to come and meet me, or we don't do it. And that's not you paying to meet me. That's not you paying to meet me at all, you're paying for a copy of the book and then I'm going to meet you, it's just so that we can guarantee a certain number of people only coming to the bookstore, because we don't want like 5,000 people turning up outside, because that's insane, and then all of you get hurt and you get cold and it's horrible, and I'm just worrying the whole time, like the whole of the London book signing, because I knew what was happening outside, it was so hard to enjoy, because I knew so many of you I didn't get to meet, and that's horrible, like you've travelled so far to see me and I just don't get to meet you. So the only way we can do it is if I do a certain if I only meet a certain number of people and that's ticketed. But then I'm not going to make you pay for a ticket to meet me. You have to pay for the book, and then you get to meet. Oh, I don't even know. I don't know what to do. That's just really bothered me now, and it's bothered you guys. And that's the thing that I'm bothered about: the fact that you guys really think that I've done this. There's comments that are like you're just trying to make more money. No, I'm not. I literally am not at all. I don't care, like, if my book sells one copy or sells 10 trillion copies. I literally, that doesn't bother me. I just wanted to provide you guys, the whole point of my book was to be able to give you, like, something offline, an experience, a pointless blog, something to do, something to make you smile, something, like, and now all I'm getting is hate because I can't meet you for free. But it's not, for, like, you're buying a copy of the book, you're not, I don't even know. I don't know what to do. There's nothing I can do really, is there? There's literally nothing I can do. I don't leave your comments down below of what you think, guys. But um, just remember that in times like this, I have the least control 
at all. Like I can't do anything. I try and I'll always try and do my best and put you guys first. But I'm not in charge at the end of the day and I don't know. Right guys, I'm gonna go to bed now. It is currently 20 to 12 at night and I've got the dentist tomorrow morning, which I'm not looking too forward to, but it's just one of those things that you have to do in life. Go to the dentist. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I wanna see if we can get, as usual, more than yesterday's. And yesterday's so far has, what was it? Was it 22,000 when I just checked? I think it was 22,000, which is a blooming lot of people. That's the same amount as the O2 Arena. So let's try and get like, 30,000. If you're still watching and you've watched through all the pub talk and all the um, signing talks which lasted long, this vlog was a long one, then comment down below saying I'm loyal and I'll know that you watched all the way to the end. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. I love you. Good night. Realise that I've already just ended the vlog now, but I thought what would be nice is to show you what I bought from Bluebird Tea Company earlier and uh, to make a little drink before I go to bed. So I bought this cup and this cup, matching, for me and Zoe. They're made out of like cool bamboo stuff. I got gingerbread chai, a ginger snap green, and a cherry lips. They smell so good. This one is like the most Christmassy drink ever. I've also got this spoon from there, which is one cup of perfect tea. And then I've put it in here, which I've also got from that company, which is some awesome like strainer thing. And I'm going to fill it up with boiling water. Dun, 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 dun. About that much. And let it do its thing for a bit and brew. And then this is my favourite bit. You don't lift up that and pour it out. Watch what you do. You ready? You just place it on top of your cup and look. <laughs> Literally, like magic. Oh my god, the perfect amount as well. This vlog should be called, How to be British. <laughs> oh my god, right. I'm going to go and enjoy this. Right, let me smell it. The smell test. Oh my gosh. Look at it as well, guys. It just looks perfect. Thanks so much for watching the video again. I love you. Good night, guys.